Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Welcome to my video on calculating and interpreting Summers D using SPSS. Summers D is short for Summers Delta, and it is a non-parametric measure of association. We use Summers D when we have data that are recorded at the ordinal level of measurement. So taking a look at these fictitious data I have loaded in the data view in SPSS, you can see I have two variables, attitude and outcome. And going to the variable view, you can see both of these variables are measured at the ordinal level. And the values for attitude are unfriendly, neutral, and friendly. And the value labels for outcome go from extremely low all the way to extremely high. So let's assume that these data are associated with a mental health clinic and we want to see how attitude can predict outcome. So this would be attitude of the staff toward the participants in the study. So you have three categories, unfriendly, neutral, and friendly. So the participants would be making this rating. They would rate the attitude of how the staff related to them during their time in the mental health treatment facility. Then outcome, which is also ordinal, they can choose from extremely low to extremely high. And this would be their general impression of how favorable the treatment outcome was for them after spending time and being treated at the mental health facility. So in this case, we want to see the association between these two variables, but we also have a hypothesis, which would be that the unfriendly and to some extent neutral attitude of staff would be associated with less favorable outcomes. And the friendly treatment, more so than the neutral or unfriendly, would be associated with positive outcomes. If we just take a quick look at these data, we can see that under the friendly level of the independent variable attitude, there are quite a few uh, high and somewhat high and extremely high responses, not many that are on the low side. And neutral does appear to be fairly mixed. There's high and low mixed together. And for unfriendly, there seems to be more low here than there are high responses. And using Summers D, we can have a directional statistic available to interpret, meaning we can decide in advance which one of these variables we want to consider the independent variable and which one we want to consider the dependent variable and interpret the Summers D table with that in mind. Summers D also provides us with a symmetric output and that would be where we, we didn't consider either variable as independent or dependent. So we, we didn't declare a, a hypothesis going into this, but rather we want to take a look at the measure of association without regard to a hypothesis. So to calculate Summers D, we'll go to Analyze, then Descriptive Statistics, and then Cross Tabs. This is what the dialog looks like by default. Attitude is our independent variable. We're going to put that in row. And outcome would be the dependent variable. We'll put that in column. Then under statistics, you can see here we have the cross tabs statistics, and there are several available. And looking under the ordinal frame, we can see there's gamma, summers D. I'm going to check that off. We also have Kendall's tau sub B and Kendall's tau sub C. For comparison, I am going to include gamma. Gamma does not take into account tied ranks and generally yields a greater measure of association than summers D. And I'm also going to select Kendall's tau sub C, 
which does take into account tied ranks. Summers D only takes into account tied ranks on the dependent variable. The reason I'm not selecting Kendall's tau sub B is this statistic is appropriate for a square cross tabulation. That is a cross tabulation that has an equal number of rows and columns. For example, a two by two or a three by three. Kendall's tau sub C is used when you have a rectangular cross tabulation. And in this example, I have three levels of the variable attitude and six levels of the variable outcome, so it's rectangular. I'll click continue and then OK here. And you can see we have no missing values up here in the case processing summary. Our total number of observations is 100. And then we want to take a moment to look at our attitude times outcome cross tabulation. So if we look here at the row attitude, we can see the attitude of the staff interpreted as unfriendly. We can see the counts here. And we can see that there are higher counts on the lower side of this Likert scale that goes from extremely low to extremely high in terms of outcome. For neutral, uh, the counts seem to be greater toward the middle, right, somewhat low and somewhat high, and there's a low count for the extremes. And when the staff was interpreted as friendly, uh, there's only one extremely low outcome, one low outcome, and only two somewhat low, and all of the other responses fall in the somewhat high, high, or extremely high categories. And this is more or less what we expected by looking at the data in the data editor. Then we have directional measures, and you can see the only statistic listed here is Summers D. It is a directional measure, and there are three different reports here. You have symmetric, and that's where you do not have a hypothesis, and right? that's 0.438. And then you have attitude as the dependent variable, an outcome is the dependent variable. And in this case, our outcome variable is our dependent variable, so we would interpret the outcome dependent row. And the value here is 0.485, and we do have statistical significance. Summers D uses what we refer to as a PRE interpretation, and PRE stands for Proportional Reduction in Error. So the way we would interpret this value, 0.485, would be to say that if we had access to this attitude variable to predict outcome, compared to a situation where we did not have access to it, and we did not use it to predict outcome, we could expect a 48.5% reduction in prediction errors when we have the attitude variable included. So having the attitude variable available and using it in this cross tabulation allows us to improve our prediction by 48.5%. So it's important to note here that if this value were negative, if this were negative 0.485, that would suggest that instead of the direction we have here, which is we move from unfriendly to friendly, we see higher counts in the high end of the outcome ranks. We would have the opposite. So moving from friendly to unfriendly, we would see higher outcome ranks. That changes the direction from positive to negative, but does not change how we interpret the outcome. Having the attitude variable available and using it would still allow us to improve our prediction by 48.5%. For comparison, as I mentioned, I also calculated uh, Kendall's tau sub c and gamma. And you can see that generally Summers D, the symmetric value here, 0.438 in this case. Generally, this value is more conservative than gamma because gamma does not take into account tied ranks. 
So if you're interested in, in symmetric output, uh, Summers D is a good choice, and so is Kendall's Tau sub C. Uh, but gamma generally is inflated compared to those two statistics. I hope you found this video on calculating and interpreting Summers D using SPSS to be helpful. As always, if you have any questions or concerns, feel free to contact me and I'll be happy to assist you.